Hey guys, welcome to my October 21st DVD update. It's been about four months since my last official DVD update, but I'm back. I know a lot of people thought that I was done, that I had quit DVD updates. No, it was just an extremely busy period of time. The last update I did was in like mid to late June, and from all of July, from July 10th all the way up until August 25th, I was doing film shoots, one after another, after another, after another. Then, me and MJ drove out on the road trip to California, where we shot a video which soon will be available online on Amazon called Around the Country. Then I got back, MJ stayed here for three weeks, Then, and between that time I didn't really get to watch anything, and then right when he left, I watched a whole bunch of stuff. So now I'm caught up. I still have about 20 other things for the next update, which will be in a couple weeks. Probably two weeks, because I'm going to try and get to these much faster. But I have a whole bunch of stuff now to talk about. And I'm going to begin. And I guess I'll start with the DVDs and then go to the Blu-rays. And the first DVD I got is actually a film. I, I want to let you guys know, Assault of the Sasquatch, which me and MJ co-starring, which is now available on DVD. It's on um, Amazon, CD Universe... I think BestBuy.com, a number of sites I saw it. I think even Target.com, I think, had it. And a lot of different prices on it. I think CD Universe, I think, is one of the cheapest. And if you don't know what this is about, basically it's about this hunter that catches a Sasquatch. The Sasquatch gets free in the city. Me and MJ play two kind of crazy, comic relief, over-the-top characters that are trying to find the Sasquatch. We see it with our, you know, we're shooting outside vlogs and stuff. We see the Sasquatch, and the whole movie is us trying to find it. It's definitely one to check out if you want to support, you know, any of the things that we've done. And um, as I said, this is available now. Put these down here, and I think the lighting is a bit better on this one than I had the last one, which was the Forgotten Films. The next one, me and MJ actually watched this together, and I think this one was mildly hard to get. I used to see it a lot at Best Buy, and then I went to a out here in California. One store I really like is called Fry's, and they do really well with having more obscure kind of horror films. And a lot of times, it's not that they have a lot more obscure ones; it's more like they must have had a lot of copies of them, and they still have got them. And I, that's what I've noticed, is they've got a lot of older DVDs, like the ones that you thought were out of print, you couldn't get, they still have got them. And I know the light's a little bit like this, it'll be worked on for the next one. I think I need a couple, like, three different lights in here, three-point lighting on this, but um, this is called Hell Comes to Frogtown, starring Rowdy Roddy Piper. And it's a, like, a, a post-apocalyptic movie where there's these frog creatures, and... Um, Roddy Roddy Piper is like the only man who's fertile. So he's become captive of these women and he has to repopulate with these women. It, it, it's interesting though. I really liked it. A lot of reviews were a little weird on it. The one guy who was in this was the guy from Motel Hell who, um, the main guy, Farmer Vincent, was in this. And it's definitely worth it for Farmer Vincent and Roddy Roddy Piper is great in this. The next one I got... I got this at this place called Book Off, not F Off, called, it's called Book Off, and this wasn't really great. I thought it would be alright, it was one of these movies that as a kid I used to always see it, right when Jurassic Park came out, I used to see this movie and be like, oh I really want to see this, but it was rated R, and it's the Carnosaur collection, and I think this is harder to get, it's only $5 for both of them, they really weren't that great, I watched the first one, it was kind of boring and like cheap. It was like this, I don't know, it really wasn't great. The next one, another one I watched with MJ, I did watch a few of these while he was here. This is called Bit Parts. This was this crazy doctor who was trying to um, put, his daughter was in this terrible accident, so he's going around and making it like he's casting for a movie, all these actresses, and he brings them in and he actually is just casting for body parts. So like nose, lips, um, boobs, things like that, for his daughter. So it's him trying to put his daughter back together. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's one. Of, it's a low budget. Uh, I think it's from 19... No, it looks like a 90s film. It's actually newer than that. I think, I think it was 2000-something. But it's one of those movies that really seems like a shot in the 90s movie. The next one I got from a YouTube user sent it to me, and it was Frankie Sloshin's show sent it. And this was one of the Ernest films, you know, Jim Varney. Not, he's not the Ernest character, but he's similar um, that he did that I had not had, that I never had. 
it's one of the harder to find ones that went out of print. You could never find it. I always used to go to closing down video stores trying to find it. And they, they would always get rid of this stuff way before they, they closed down. But it was Jim Varney and Treehouse Hostages. And it was okay. It was about a bunch of these kids. I think the kid from this was in something recently. I think he was in... um. The Social Network, this kid. I'm pretty sure. He looked a lot like... The, I mean, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was, though. But it was... Um, Jim Varney broke out of jail for something that he didn't do. And he ends up getting caught in this kid's treehouse. And the kids hold him hostage. And then they become friends with Jim Varney. I mean, it, it's fun. It's a fun... One of those 90s kind of things that came out when I was in middle school. I like it. If you like Jim Varney and you want to see one that you haven't seen, see this. There was one he did, too, that was... a ski patrol or something that really wasn't great though but this is one that's cool, worth checking out then I got both of the new Goosebumps ones and these ones were a little bit of the cheesy ones like I think they put out a lot of the really good Goosebumps so far and they that, like, most of the good ones have already come out and now they're kinda just putting out the other ones and some of these ones were a little cheap and it was um, the blob that ate everything and they've changed the covers now the covers for these used to be if you remember the actual covers of the Goosebumps books and they used to only be one episode on a disc now they're three episodes which is better because you know it's mildly a ripoff when you were paying ten dollars for one episode th you know twenty five minutes for ten dollars if not more but this is like the blob that ate everything and the one though that was kind of interesting was um, the Professor Fink if you know the um, Are You Afraid of the Dark series was in one of these episodes called Piano Lessons Can Be Murder and his acting was really really bad but it was funny but I don't know I don't I don't know if Prof Professor Fink you know is a trained thespian or what I mean, he did good in, in Afraid of the Dark, but something about the way he acted in this, you're gonna, if you see it, you're going to be like... But it's worth it to see him in it, though. And the other one was um, Go Eat Worms and Revenge of the Lauren Gnomes. And this, it's funny, this Lauren Gnomes thing, they're actually like making something similar to that now. Like a, And then here's another one that I got with MJ at, Fro, at, no, at FYE. They still have, no, at a Sam Goody. They still have, like, one Sam Goody in the world. There may be more, but it's in um, the one mall out here, which is kind of funny. It's, like, the only one I've seen. Just, like, in one mall on the trip, I saw a Saturday matinee still. But this is called 18 Again. It's one of those movies which is a, you know, f switching bodies. And it's, um, you know, Jerds Burns switching the body with a kid. And, um... I think it's because George, Bourne, like, because the kid, you never really see him do anything with the old guy because the old man's in a coma. I also think George Bourne, Burns didn't really feel like being in much of this. It really wasn't great. I would pick like, like father, like son, and my, my father, the hero, over this. It was okay. It really wasn't that that great. The next one is from the Fangoria Fright Fest, and I have two more of these. I think that I have to, that I want to watch Roadkill and um, another one that I'm working on watching those still but this is called Dark House and I actually thought this was alright Jeffrey Combs stars in this one it's about it opens with these kids and the one kid um, I think this is like 10 15 years before the story takes place in but it's this girl that walks into this house and this orphanage and sees all these kids dead then she then she sees Simone you know from Pee Wee's Big Adventure yes Simone was in this you know that actress who was in the um the rest stop movies too she's really good though but she played it really over the top and she's like <laughs> That's how she played it. Very strange. <laughs> that's how all the ghosts were in this. Like that. I'm not kidding. When you see it, that's the way they were. But it's about them. This girl, and then it comes years later, and Jeffrey Combs is opening up a haunted house. One of the newest state-of-the-art haunted houses with digital images. images, 3D images that, you know, prospect out, and you can see them, and they can interact with the people. Well, something happens... And Simone takes over the system, and the people who are in there tr trying it out for the night, which is a group of these kids he gets, these actors at this local school, brings in. The actors all start getting killed off by Simone's, you know, taking over the system and bringing all those 3D images, you know, whatever you call them, the 3D things to life. They start killing them. I thought it was okay. There's a few things in it that I didn't 
was surprised they didn't do, but it is worth checking out. Jeffrey Combs is actually in it a lot more than I thought. It's a lot of times when you see these things, the person's in it for these small cameos, which is like a second. But he's actually throughout this movie. The next one, these I didn't like too much. I've got, I've got a, I don't know, they, they're, um, the Roger Corman double feature, it's the evil and twice dead. I only looked at the, um, twice dead, it didn't seem that great. I don't know, there's a bunch of new ones he put out, um, you know, new, new to Blu-ray that they've just come out, like, um, something, I, I have the Slumber Party movies, I don't have the Sorority House Massacre films, though, but it was something with, like, some humanoids from the deep or something. Let me know if any of those are worth checking out. The next one, I saw this trailer on Wet Movie One's channel, and it's a documentary on these crazy fans of Tiffany. Tiffany the singer, you know, I think we're alone now. That Tiffany. And it's called I Think We're Alone Now. And it's about the one, this one woman and this one guy that are absolutely obsessed with Tiffany. The one guy was had all a number of times has had restraining orders that you know came and went they were for three years and it's him talking about his obsession with her and Tiffany must have signed off on this because she you actually they actually use footage of her concert and of her actually meeting these people so I guess she saw it and figured oh what the hell I'll sign off because there's a couple scenes when everybody was blurred out so she must have signed off on this but like I said it was these people that were crazy you know, obsessed with her, they're talking about their obsession, the one was in love with her, and it, it's definitely worth checking out. If you want a weird documentary, kind of remind me a little bit of um, the, the trauma one, Jeff Town. It was real raw, and I don't know, I, I like this though. Definitely check this out, look at the trail online for it. And the next one I got, for some reason I had an urge to get this, and it was only $2 at this used store. And I, I don't know, I kind of liked it. They never put out the later seasons of it, and it was pumped. And yes, you know, the thing that's kind of funny about watching it is, if it's from 2003, it's kind of like looking back at who was, you know, hot sheet back then. And I don't know, it, it's interesting, and I know they're now talking about having Justin Bieber, Bieber, come back, and that's not how you say his name, but that's how I say it. Justin Bieber, come back and be the new host of Punked. So I guess he's going to punk, punk a bunch of his little sheet friends, go, you got punked, it's Justin Bieber. I guess that's what's going to happen, I don't know. Unless it's going to be Justin Bieber like punking all these all of Ashton Kutcher's old friends again or something, they'll be like, "Who is? Who's this? Who's this little sheet?" That's probably what's going to happen. And the next one I got is one that I talked about in one of my um, I think favorite '70s horror films. I know I talked about it before, and they finally put it out on official DVD. And it's Dark Night of the Scarecrow, and it's from a company, VCI Enter Entertainment, which I didn't even know was still making stuff anymore. I guess they came back, or I never noticed, but I thought they were gone for a while. But this is a movie about that stars, you know, the guy from Doctor Giggles. He was also in Bean and a couple other movies, and it op it opens with him with his kid, and he has mental problems, and he's really good friends with this girl, and. The, everyone in town thinks that things are going on and he's up to no good with this girl and then at one point the girl and him are outside and the, he, the girl they're throwing this ball around the ball goes over the fence and the girl gets attacked by a dog then he brings the girl home she's all bloodied up and he's like I didn't do it and then it becomes a nightmare he's chased out into the field by the townspeople he gets shot because he's hiding in a scarecrow costume and you don't know if and then the scarecrow comes back you don't know if it's him what it is it's definitely worth checking out it's one of the um, like movie of the week films from the 70s a lot like bad Ronald if you like bad Ronald it was very similar to that style film but definitely check this out Dark Knight of the Scarecrow and this one I just got because it was five dollars, and I know it sells for usually twenty-five to thirty. That's Degrassi season seven. I'm gonna get the other ones. I always thought this was a kind of a fun show. I got the old Degrassi show because it was real cheap, too. But I'm gonna talk about that in the next update. The next one I got, like, like I said, there's a lot of DVDs in this. This has been a long time since I've done this. The next one is Class of 1999. And I had this one for a while, never got to talk about it. I think I had that even before the last update. And this was basically about, uh, in the future, all the people have gone, like, the towns have gone to sheet. Like, if you saw, like, Back in the Future 2, it's basically, like, the way the schools were in the future, the way the world was in the future. And the kids have basically taken over the school. There's nothing they can do. But they need to get the kids back in school. And they have this system where they have these, um, spe like, special teachers that are coming in that they don't that are 
robots, like RoboCop teachers. The kids don't know that, but the, the teachers all flip out, start going crazy. And Joshua Miller, the kid from um, a number of movies, is in this. This is a really cool one to check out. Also, the woman from um, My Boyfriend's Back from the Dead is in this as well. The next one I got is a movie called Finding Bliss, which I really like this one. This was a like a comedy movie that's about... Um, that I never say how to say her name right. It's like Lily Sabuski. Well, she was in Eyes Wide Shut in the Glass House, and she's basically a student that's graduated from, you know, I think film. She graduated from film school with a big degree, and um, I forgot who the it was a big director that um, gave her this award when she was there. She goes out to Hollywood, nothing's going well. She can't get any work directing, so then she ends up getting a job editing pornos. And then in between that, she, she realizes, oh, I can shoot my movie in the, you know, during, in this studio, because they're in like basically like a vivid studio. And she starts shooting her movie there and using the porn actors. And Jamie Kennedy in this, and for some reason, Jamie Kennedy shows his Johnson. Don't ask me why. He, guys, he felt the need to. But this was really good. And the one thing that was cool was the music in this. It's very much like real, like, you know... Um, not eight, like real late 80s kind of synth music. If you if you watch this movie, you'll know exactly what I mean. It's definitely worth checking out. It's real cheap. I found it at Walmart. The next one, I talked about this a while ago when I had the screener copy. This is a newer version of it. It has a couple different added in scenes in it. It's I think it's a little bit longer. It's called Sculpture. It has Rain Brown, who's a great actress that I worked with on a movie called Geek Wars. But this movie's about her... And in the beginning of the movie, she's very abused by her father and real troubled. And she comes, this is years later, she's, um, the art dealer, played by Alan Roe Kelly, is saying, oh, you need to get back into making art and making sculptures. So she ends up making a sculpture of the perfect man. And she ends up using pieces of all different kinds of men, arms, legs, Johnsons, everything, to make the perfect man. And this one's definitely worth checking out. It came out from Camp Motion Pictures. Okay, now the next one. Now this one I've talked about this a lot. is one of the ones that I couldn't believe wasn't out yet. And for, it was only ever on tape. And someone let me know that it's out through the new um, Warner Brothers On Demand. Now Warner Brothers, you know, burn on demand. Just like, um, no, it's out from MGM On Demand. Warner Brothers On Demand was out, which is the way you get Bad Ronald and a number of other things. But with um, MGM On Demand, they put out Hurricane Streets. This was a movie with Brendan Sexton III. It was, this is one movie I always like to watch a lot in middle school. It's about these kids and um, Brendan Sexton. You know, it's one of those kind of movies a little bit like kids. And he's like living in the city. He wants to go to New Mexico to see his father. And he's always thinking that his father's going to send this money. His mom's in jail. I don't know, it's, it's a really cool movie, very difficult to explain. Definitely look at the trailer for this. And I was really glad to see they finally put this out. The next one, a lot, I know pretty much everybody who worked on this one, at least 50-60%, and it's Faces of Schlock, which just came out from EI Cinema. And it stars, um, there's different segments. My good friend Chris LaMartina, who did the movie President's Day, which I was in, and the film Witches Brew, which I was in, directed a segment in this, as well as um, the other person, what's his name? At the moment, I'm not remember. no, Henrik. Henrik directed the other segment at the end, as well as Justin Car Carnell, who I worked with as well, who was in President's Day and directed... Um, I'm, I'm blanking on all the names, but Ruby LaRocca, I work with on President's Day and Zombie Babies this summer, but um, this is like an anthology horror film. The ones that Chris Lomartina directed is about a doctor who becomes obsessed. He, he's obsessed with feet, and he, he's obsessed with this one dancer's feet. Her foot gets very infected. It's just him all obsessed with it. Definitely a funny one. The other one, which had a lot more production values because they had more time to shoot it, was Henrix, and that one starred Ruby LaRocca. And had, there was like a slasher kind of thing. This is a really cool one, though. Definitely check this out. Um, and that's out now.